Good morning. Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church on this Reconciling and Works Sunday. We're so happy that you are here. Um, you're going to see a, um, a slightly different uh, service today, so we're excited about that and um, hope that you will all enjoy it. I want to take just a few minutes to mention a couple things. Uh, in your um, bulletin, there's a blue insert. That's the announcement page. Inside there, you'll find a yellow attendance sheet. We'd ask everyone to fill that out. Let us know that you're here. If you have any changes in um, contact information, if you need something from us, a newsletter, e-blast, a call from the pastor, please fill that out. If you have any special prayers that are not already in our announcement page, please let us know. And you take this yellow sheet, put it to the outside aisle. The ushers will pick it up and we'll take care of all of those requests, all of those things that you need. Then at the the front, I wanted to point out that today we're having a special congregational meeting in the social hall um, after service, one topic only, and that is our 2024 budget. So we do need a quorum for that, so please come and hear um, the state of our finances and um, how we plan to take care of things. Um, also, uh, there is a daytime with lunch bunch at 11.30 on this Tuesday, always on the last Tuesday of the month. If you have any questions, Chris Caldwell can answer those for you. I believe it's at Hoff's Hut on Bellflower Boulevard over in Los Altos, and they're always looking for people to join in their food and fellowship. Um, also, next Saturday is our installation day, big celebrations for uh, Pastor Nikki. So we're so happy uh, that we've got that coming on. So if you haven't let us know that you'll be attending the service or the luncheon, please let us know. You can talk to uh, me or Lisa Cottrell, Rebecca, um, let us know. So we make sure that we've got you know, enough of that delicious food for everybody. Also, two inserts uh, that I wanted to draw your attention to. The preschool has invited us to the ribbon cutting blessing ceremony for their new playground equipment. So they wanted to wait until they had all the pieces in place because you know how things go. You gotta replace something that's scratched or broken and a piece was missing and now you gotta wait for it. So we're hoping everything will be in place by February 11th after worship. We will do a blessing on their playground and uh, I believe there's gonna be a Sunday ad after that. I think it's um, Joyce Carter's uh, sharing of her uh, journal of her journey with her mom during her Alzheimer's um, experience. Also, um, Shannon Timney is going to be starting uh, February 21st for several weeks, um, two months. <laughs> She's going to be having a woman's Bible study here on Wednesday evenings, and it's called God of Deliverance. If you'd like to take a look at the book that they'll be working on, uh, take a look at that. Ask Shannon for any questions that you have. Um, also, if you wanted to help serve the meal at COA, prepare and or serve, and you didn't get a chance to sign up, please see Shannon Howard, and she can get that information for you and work on a carpool plan, and uh, so you don't need to drive out there if you're not sure where you're going. And then I also have an announcement from Lisa Cottrell. Good morning. I'm getting my feet wet and the new hat on of connections and joining that great group and have two things for us this morning. We're going to send around the clipboard for sign-ups for Lenten soup. Um, I learned how to make enchilada soup one Lenten time, and it was fun, and it was really good. So I had a lot of fun making soup. You don't have to make it, but you could. Um, for 10 people, or if you're not into the soup part, you could also make bring cookies for 10. So we're doing those Sunday afternoons, so if there's an opportunity to sign up, please do. We're also having a theme day. On February 11th, we're encouraging you to wear Valentine something. Could be a sweater, Stephanie. It could be a shirt. And also, if you would bring a Valentine in an envelope, you could write something on the back. We're going to have a box where you're going to stick it in as you come in. And then as you leave, you're going to take a Valentine that somebody else gave. Just kind of trying to enjoy the holiday season. Because lots of us don't, well, I do work with kids, but if you don't, you kind of miss all those things, so it'd be fun to do that. So two weeks, there'll be another announcement about that too, but you could start planning. Thanks. Hi, 
I invite you to rise in body or spirit. This morning we'll be beginning with a thanksgiving for baptism, so I invite you to orient yourself towards the baptismal font. In the name of the Creator, and of the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier, whose voice reverberated in blazing bush, and whose image reflects our sacred belonging and purpose. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are held so close by God's endless compassion and transformation, which flow like an unfailing stream. God's generous gift of water is for all God's beloveds, while remembering that water is restorative, that precious resource as it is. Water is used for healing, washing, playing, nurturing, cleansing, and in many traditions and communities, water is used in spiritual practices. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give thanks for the breath that hovered over resounding waters and spoke life into being, for the great flood that proclaimed God's promise through rainbow-colored brilliance, for the sea that split open our thirst for power, control, and dominance. We give thanks for the one who transformed water into wine and then yearned to share it with those that society deemed disenfranchised. We give thanks for the gift of baptism and this not particularly special water that came from a faucet. Water that proclaims that you and me, we all are beloved children of God, and nothing can separate us from the love of God made known through Jesus. Cleanse our fears. Drown our divisions. Let us die to a life that pulls us from your relentless love. And let us rise to a life that says yes. And to you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Let's join together in singing.
the grace of the one who redeemed and redeems us, the love, mercy, and justice of the one who created all beyond our wildest dreams and called it all good, and the wisdom of the one who challenged us to go and do likewise be with you all. Let us pray. Holy and living God, we open to you this day. May peace flow and let justice roll down like an ever-flowing stream. Help us to see that no one is outside your love, outside our love. Remind us that we are not alone, thanks to your abiding presence, through Jesus Christ, the free gift of grace. You may be seated.
All right. It is time for the children's chat, so I'd like to invite any children among us to come on down. This message is especially for you. Brad, I did something to the microphone. I need help. And I'm taller. <laughs> the first reading is from Amos chapter 5. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals. I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps, but let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The second reading is from Romans uh, chapter 8. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who will not withhold his own son but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Jesus Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? 
will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the gospel reading. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Just then, a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. This last week, I attended the ELCA Youth Ministry Network Extravaganza. It's a mouthful, so we just call it the E. 
It's a week-long event that is put on by and for those who work with children, youth, and their families in the church or in parachurch organizations. It includes pastors, youth directors, camp folks, volunteers, educators, you name them. The focus of the event is threefold, to help folks renew, educate, and connect. I'm one of the very privileged folks who gets to craft and curate what happens on the main stage, where we participate in worship, sing, pray, hear speakers, we ask questions, we have conversations, we are challenged, encouraged, and equipped. It is a joy to work on this event and at the same time, so very exhausting. You pour literally everything you have into this week long time together and yet I wouldn't trade it for the world. Our theme verse for the event this year was Acts 2, 17. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your children shall prophesy and your young shall see visions, and your old shall dream dreams. The E asked of this year's participants to wonder about what could be. What does God dream of for our world, for our churches, for our communities? And how might we have a role to play in making these dreams become a reality? As God's people each Sunday, hopefully we'll do this same sort of discernment together seeking out God's dreams for us, and praying that we might be a part of them, God's hands and feet in the world. The last Sunday I was with you was January 14th, so you might remember during that time, we created our own signs, signs of invitation to come and see and to hear what this God is about. I asked you to take words that are core to your faith, your understanding of God and God's character, and use them to share the good news with a neighbor by putting them on a sign. And if you haven't seen them yet, they're actually in the Norfolk. So if you get a chance at the end of service, please check them out. It's a beautiful compilation of the words that you use to describe the God that we know and love. Words appear on there like forgiveness, strength, light of the world. But by far the word that appears the most is love or loving. In fact, more than half of the signs included this word. And to help with the visual, I added a small heart on each paper that included love, the same amount for how many times it appears on the card. And so you see this little smattering of hearts. It's a reminder to each one of us of the centrality of God's love in the Christian story and the impact this love makes on us, both on a communal and a personal level. We are loved, and we then be love in the world. This morning's gospel, it talks about two of the greatest commandments, love God and love neighbor. And it's in the case of, or the description rather, of the parable of the Good Samaritan. Hopefully this is a familiar story to you. If not, I would definitely flag, underline it in your Bible. It's one of the more popular ones. A man falls in amongst robbers and is left for dead. Luckily, a, a priest approaches on the road and finds the man. Surely he will bandage his wounds, pray for the man's healing, and connect him to appropriate resources. But contrary to our expectations, the priest does nothing and passes by. Luck strikes a second time when a Levite passes by. Surely he will stop. He will tend to the man's needs and find him safe shelter. But again, the Levite passes by without doing what we know is the right thing to do. To help the man in need. Then a Samaritan comes upon the man. We've heard about Samaritans, or at least how they were viewed in biblical times. An other, people that the Jews didn't associate with, unclean, perhaps one of society's outcasts. We are led to believe that there is no way that this Samaritan will help. And yet, it is this man, 
Not the religious leader, not the esteemed teacher, but this man that shows him mercy. Verses 36 and 37 say, Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, The one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, Go and do likewise. What does it mean to show mercy like the Samaritan of today's parable? What does it mean to care for the neighbor according to their need? And what might service to our neighbor look like? Well, as many of you know, I'm new around here. <laughs> I'm just learning a bit about you and what you do and how your faith impacts the way that you live, breathe, and move in the world. And so I want to give you an opportunity to have some time with one another and to share with me the things that you're already up to, the things that you are doing to serve God's world. So I'm going to give you 90 seconds you're going to talk to someone next to you. You get extra points if it's not someone you drove with <laughs> or maybe even share a home with. Um, so 90 seconds to talk about ways that you participate in service to your neighbor, whether that be here in our community or elsewhere. So 90 seconds. Ready, set, go. All right, friends, I'm going to turn your attention back this way. Thank you so much for your conversation. And I did take note of everyone who spoke to someone they don't live with. So I'm keeping tally. Good news. Um, I would love to hear folks that might raise their hand and just tell me one way that service to neighbor is happening in your life. So what is one way you are serving your neighbor? Um, last time I was with you, I mentioned that when I ask questions, they're not rhetorical, and I really actually want to hear your voice out loud. <laughs> so just a reminder. So anybody who'd like to share a way that this community or beyond? Yes, Tricia. Thank you. So Stephen's ministry, part of the visitation and pastoral care that comes through this place. Thank you. What else? Yeah, Shannon, and then we'll go to Doug. And COA stands for, remind me. Christian Outreach and Action. Okay, thanks. Yeah, Doug. Thank 
Thank you. All right, we'll take two more. Two more. Yes, Ron. Service can look all different ways. That's wonderful. I like that. Let's do one more. One more way that we're serving. Yes, please, Mary. Thank you. So I am confident I could talk all afternoon with you about the ways that you are serving in God's world with love. Um, it is amazing the opportunities that are here that y'all are taking part in. It's also amazing the people that you're partnering with that are doing this work, that you share mission with. Even if we're not on the ground doing those things, we're certainly supporting those endeavors. We celebrate those ways that we are a part of service to the world. And I wonder how we might define good service. What makes service good? It's not just about helping people, but it's about building relationships, about identifying and acknowledging our shared humanity with one another, seeking to understand. Activist and artist Lilla Watson says this, you are no one's savior. You are a mutual partner in the pursuit of freedom. When you think about service, how does this phrase shift things for you? A mutual partner. A shift from service to, to service with. Watson also says, if you have come here to help me, you are wasting your time. But if you have come because your liberation is bound up with mine, then let us work together. What does it mean for us to engage in this kind of work, this collaborative work? And how might we be called into relationship, into shared storytelling, into mutuality of being seen, known, and celebrated for who we are? And how might this be a part of God's dreams for our world? One of the ways that we are serving our communities and also joining in God's dreams for the world is through our support of reconciling works and our shared commitments. On this, the last Sunday in January, we join with over 1,050 plus Reconciling in Christ partners in what Reconciling Works describes as an annual worship celebration created to share in the commitment our organization and partnering faith communities have in the ongoing work of welcome, inclusion, celebration, and advocacy for LGBTQIA plus people in the life of the church. As you saw in the beginning slides, this year is a particularly special year for Reconciling Works as they are celebrating their 50th anniversary. 50 years of ministry and care for God's beloved in the pursuit of justice for LGBTQIA plus folks. I want to invite you actually to turn to the beginning part of your bulletin. Um, just the first page on the inside, normally you'd find there the worship theme, which talks a little bit about the gospel text and the other texts that are included in today's service. But this week is a little bit different. This week, included there, is our Reconciling in Christ welcome statement. When this congregation committed to being Reconciling in Christ, or RIC, you were charged to come up with a welcome statement. And I want us to read it aloud and remind ourselves of what this commitment has looked like for us in the past and continues today. Do you see it there? Okay, good. All right, let's join together. We are a friendly congregation who joyfully welcomes everyone who enters our doors. The decision to become a Reconciling in Christ congregation was made with much prayer and deep desire to affirm those who have felt cut off from any faith community, 
to be a reconciling in Christ congregation means that we openly welcome all people, regardless of their sexual orientation or gender identity. So you can see that we continue to expand our language and we continue to wonder about the ways that God's dreams for us have called us to even widen our welcome further. We believe that our communities are not complete without the presence and experience, wisdom, and leadership of our LGBTQIA siblings. We know that we are better for being in relationship with these neighbors, and we pray that our communities might be changed, shaped, and evolved because of these ongoing connections. As I was thinking about this, it reminded me of one of my favorite Broadway musicals, Wicked. It's the backstory for The Wizard of Oz as we learn the relationship between the Wicked Witch of the West, Alphaba, and Glinda the Good Witch of the North. Two different girls from different backgrounds with different passions, but ones in which they're able to find common ground. They sing a song called For Good, and if you haven't heard it before, I encourage you to look it up after the service. Part of the lyrics say this, who can say if I've been changed for the better? But because I knew you, I have been changed for good. This is my hope, that in seeing one another, in hearing and sharing our stories, that in loving one another as God loves us, that because we knew one another, we will be changed for the better, for good. We pray that it would be so in us. Let us pray. God of all time, for the people and stories that have shaped us all, we give thanks. Alert us to the need of those around us and help us to embody love to all we encounter. Equip and send us out to connect with those within and outside of our circles in an effort to know and experience the diversity and beauty of your created people. It's in your name we pray. This morning's sermon song is a song called Build a Longer Table. It's from a new expansion called All Creation Sings. It's kind of a companion to the ELW or the Evangelical Lutheran Worship Book, which is in your pews. So hopefully it's uh, one that we can become familiar with. It's got a wonderful message. Please rise, embody your spirit as we sing together.
We remain standing as together we proclaim our faith with the world's words of the Apostles' Creed. Join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may take that posture which is most prayerful for you. You may remain standing or be seated or kneel. As we celebrate Christ, embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds up your church in love. May all church leaders and teachers honor your instruction and model your inclusive ways. God of grace, receive our prayer. Renewing God, we pray for all of creation, that waterways flow with clean and clear water, natural spaces are protected, and our planet is healed. Let us commit to thoughtful care of the earth. God of grace, receive our prayer. Justice-seeking God, we pray for those in government and community leadership, that they lead with honor and mindfulness. May they remember their covenants and be upright in their ways. Protect those serving as first responders in the Peace and Diplomatic Corps, and in our nation's military. Especially this morning, we pray for Samuel, Ryan, Morgan, Johnny, Jim, Stephen, Brina, and Michael. God of grace, receive our prayer. Still speaking, God, we pray for our congregation and for the congregations of the Greater Long Beach Conference, for its artists and musicians, and for its pastors, educators, and caretakers. We pray also for our sister, Linda Gawthorne, working with the Kogi people of Columbia in their translation of your word into their tongue. Use all these gifts to care for those in need and to live out your example of accompaniment, gospel witness, and love. God of grace, receive our prayer. Reconciling God, we give thanks for reconciling works. It's 50 years of ministry and all the reconciling and Christ partners. May their ministry with their members in their communities and in the larger church be a mighty force of justice rolling down like waters of an ever-flowing stream. God of grace, receive our prayer. Celebrating God, we give thanks for our lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, non-binary, pansexual, queer question questioning, asexual, and also for black, brown, indigenous people, for people of color in Christ, and the gifts that they all bring to our church and society. May our churches be bold and prophetic 
in the ways we live out our welcome, inclusion, celebration, and advocacy with and for our siblings. May we all know that in their truest, fullest, most authentic selves, they are perfectly formed, perfectly loved as God created them to be. God of grace, receive our prayer. Compassionate God, may we all know your love as we pray for those in need, especially those who have known rejection, any who struggle with long-term illness or chronic pain, those without access to safe housing or health care, and any suffering in their life. This morning we remember especially Lori, I own, Sydney and Francis, Don, Judy, Daniel, Chris and Cheryl, Kathy, Karen, Jeff, Barry and Janice, Kurt, Gary and Linda, Chad, Barrett, Carolina, Michael, Noah, Lois, Zach, Jeff, Charlie and David, Mary, Denise, Cameron, Gretchen, Barbara, Gina, Daryl, David, Cindy, Kylie and Crystal, Doris, Ben, Barbara, Barb, Katrina, Don, Sue, Rhonda, Barnez, Christina and Scott, Tom, Sherry, Christina, Vicki, Vaughn, and Jessica, as well as those that we name aloud before you now or in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, receive our prayer. This morning, the congregation has lifted up those of their concern. With Chris, we pray for Ivy, John, Dara, and Ryan. With Beverly, we have prayers for Brian for his surgery on Tuesday. We pray for Bill Ralph recovering from surgery. We pray for the family of Christine, a friend recently passed away. We pray for Adam, Amy, and Matt. We pray for Poppy in the hospital, prayers to get better. We pray for Lois Brown, for Pat, Sherry, Cherry, and Logan. And we pray for Russell Midland. God of grace, receive, receive our prayer. We pray also this morning, as we remember teachers, mentors, and companions in the church and in our lives, we remember too Thomas Aquinas, whom we commemorate today. And we pray this morning for all who have died. We pray this morning with Barbie in the loss of her daughter. May Barbie have peace. May her family have rest in your loving care. God of grace, Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with those gathered this morning.
Let us pray together. For the gift of unconditional love. For the way in which these offerings will become gifts of love embodied. For the gift of this community bound and working together. We give thanks. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we would cry out for the waters of justice to roll down, bringing heaven on earth, watering it with God's will for love-soaked humanity since creation began. For God continues to stand with and for all peoples. And so we sing with all the company of heaven. just and merciful God, new birth for creation broke forth upon us in Jesus. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your peoples. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. In these acts of love and justice, we see the birth of our call as church to let the waters of justice roll, knowing we have been delivered from death through a covenant of water and the Spirit. In this moment, we remember all who suffer in our day and imagine how Jesus would respond to them. In this silence, I invite you to call to mind and heart, remembering to God the people and places known and unknown that need our prayers and that so desperately need a place at your table of love. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We proclaim this truth. Death is part of life. Right. Part of death. But death will not have the last word. Christ is risen. And suffering will end. Christ, Christ will come end. again. And again and again, every time suffering is alleviated, comfort is given, food is offered, hope is restored. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this body gathered here and on our union with each other and with these gifts of bread and cup. May we become your body for the sake of a world where justice rolls down like an ever-flowing stream. Amen. Amen. We join together in the Lord's Prayer and the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. This morning for communion, we'll be uh, following the direction of our ushers. We'll be uh, processing to the front along the side aisles. There will be servers at both sides. The first server will have the wafer. There are gluten-free wafers available, so just ask. The next server will have a chalice, which is used for intinction. It's a fancy word for dipping. So don't uh, take your wafer right away, but take the wafer and dip it into the chalice. The chalice has wine. If you would like to receive grape juice 
or you'd like to have an option that's not an intinction option, there will be a server in the center that will have smaller cups that you can receive both wine and grape juice from that station. And then you'll be invited to process back to your seat down the center aisle. We'll be singing during communion, so you're invited to do that as well. If you'd like to receive a blessing rather than communion this morning, go ahead and put your hands across your chest and we'll give you that blessing. God knows what you need. Come and receive it. Be inspired to offer it to the world. Everyone is welcome at the table of God.
please rise in body or spirit. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we give thanks for the opportunity to serve and be served by those you place in our paths. Take our thanks and make it action. Take your rolling, love-soaked justice and drench us with the desire and capacity to bring it more fully into every single thing we do. Because you give us the courage, you give us the freedom, you call us to walk in the ways of your Son, the Christ, the Redeemer, in this world with your Spirit by our side. We honor this call and give thanks. May the outrageous welcome of our Creator accept and love us for who we are. May the incarnation of the Word touch and hold us close. May the dancing flicker of the rainbow spirit help us risk ourselves for love and the blessing of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We join together in singing. Amen. 